In this video, I'm going through the top 10 nutrients to support and balance your immune system. It's really key that we have a balanced immune system. People will say, I want things to boost my immune system, but that's not necessarily gonna give us optimal effectiveness. And the reason why is when the immune system is hyperactive, it's firing too much. And in which case, it can be damaging our own self tissue. In fact, a hyper responsive immune system, we may end up with chronic inflammation and autoimmunity or things like seasonal allergies where the body is just going haywire. It's, it's driving up too much immune activity to things that are not problematic like pollen. And so that is a hyper responsive immune system. We could also have an under responsive immune system. And when our immune system is under responsive, we end up with frequent colds and flus. We have viral infections that cause a lot of problems inside of our system, higher risk of bacterial infections. We also can develop cancer over time because cancer, normally our immune system should be able to regulate the abnormal growth of cells and actually trigger cellular apoptosis where we destroy these abnormal cell growths. And if we're not, then over time we can develop tumors and cancer. So we really want a balanced immune system for optimal effectiveness. Now, in this list of nutrients, you'll notice I don't have any herbs. And there are some great herbs for the immune system. Elderberry, echinacea, golden seal, yarrow. I mean, we can talk about a lot of different herbs. The issue with herbs is people have different responses to them. It's not as consistent of a response as nutrients are. On top of that, some herbs can uh, can increase certain pathways, Th1, Th2 pathways, and in some cases create immune imbalances. These nutrients that I'm talking about here are really, you know, at least eight of them are really essential nutrients that we need, okay? And all of these are very, very well tolerated and they help to balance or modulate the immune system. So they're not going to cause high firing of one part of our immune system, let's say our Th1 arm, or our Th2 arm, which are both parts of our cell-mediated immunity, the T helper cells, it's not gonna cause an excess firing of one of those arms as opposed to the other, but it's gonna create balance and modulation. So let's go through these. Vitamin A, really key for the development of mucosal membranes. Mucus, you know, we think about mucus as just kind of the green yucky stuff that comes out of our nose when we're sick, but mucus is what lines all of our um, epithelial lining, so our gut lining, our sinuses, respiratory lining, we have mucus, and that's actually where the immune component of our body lies. That's where most of our immune system, right? Roughly 70, 80% of our immune system is in this epithelial lining inside the mucus. The mucus contains something called secretory IgA. It's the first line of defense. It's in our mouth, it's in our nose, all these epithelial linings, our gut. So anywhere where we're exposed to the outside environment, through breathing, for example, through eating food, you're gonna have secretory IgA. It's the first immune component to kind of uh, interact with any sort of potential pathogen, any sort of danger component. So we really need to have healthy mucosal membranes, really need vitamin A for that. It also is key for T cell as well as B cell development. T cell is part of our cell mediated immunity. We call that, um, you know, that's cell mediated or the T helper cells. B cell is the humoral mediated or, you know, antibody formation. And so we need both of those, vitamin A critical for that. Vitamin D, you've probably heard about vitamin D and vitamin D deficiency. It's an epidemic in our society. Vitamin D I call the master immunomodulator. So vitamin D is super key for balancing the immune system. Without optimal vitamin D levels, our immune system is like running around with a blindfold on. Anything that could potentially be dangerous is gonna take wax at. And for many people, it just becomes extremely underactive, which allows cancer growths, viral infections to replicate, cancer growths to develop in our body. Gives us an under, under responsive immune system oftentimes when we're vitamin D deficient. So master immunomodulator. Now the thing with vitamin D is, you can't just take vitamin D to get your vitamin D levels optimized. Ideally, you're getting your vitamin D from good sun exposure, but you actually need vitamin A, you need magnesium in order to optimally absorb and utilize vitamin D. Sometimes a vitamin D deficiency is also masked, it's also actually a magnesium deficiency. The person might be taking vitamin D, but they're not able to convert it into the active form of vitamin D and get it into the cell where it can be used without adequate vitamin A, magnesium, and also actually zinc as well. Zinc is critical for that as well. So we need those nutrients 
to be absorbed in our system in order to, to optimize vitamin D. In general, we wanna get our vitamin D levels up somewhere between 60 and 100 nanograms per milliliter. Now, it won't be flagged as deficient on a lab test unless it's under 30 nanograms per milliliter. However, for optimal effectiveness of our immune system, we really want that up over 60 nanograms per milliliter. Most people will get that by taking somewhere around 1,000 international units of vitamin D per 25 pounds of body weight. Vitamin D is always best absorbed with food. It's a fat-soluble nutrient. Same with vitamin A, same with vitamin K2. All absorb best with food by taking that supplement with food. Now, I wanna jump down to vitamin K2 here. I talked about magnesium being needed for vitamin D. Vitamin K2 is not needed to absorb and optimize our vitamin D levels, but it plays a role with vitamin D in the immunomodulating uh, effect, meaning that vitamin D's ability to modulate and balance the immune system is not as good if we don't have enough vitamin K2. The problem is vitamin K2 is hard to get from food. It's mostly in fermented foods. It can be in egg yolk, grass-fed butter. Those are really our best sources. For many people, they're not consuming these types of foods, and therefore, they're gonna be very, very deficient in vitamin K2. I recommend if you're supplementing with vitamin D, ideally, you're also taking a K2 with it because again, they balance the immunomodulating effect. Vitamin K2 also works with vitamin D to uh, help metabolize calcium and get calcium out of the bloodstream and into the bones. When we have excess calcium in the bloodstream, we can have increased amounts of calcifications, joint calcifications, um, calcified arteries and blood vessels. And so vitamin K2, getting enough of that helps with absorbing the calcium, getting into the bones to keep strong, healthy bones, right? And that's super key as well. Now, magnesium works with these. It synergizes with it for vitamin D, also for calcium metabolism, but magnesium is very, very key for that. Magnesium also, we think about it for rest and recovery. Magnesium helps to keep our neurons and our muscle cells relaxed. It keeps our cell from having excess calcium. So we don't want too much calcium in the blood. We also don't want too much calcium in our cells or they become overly excited, the cells do. And that can ultimately lead to, like in our nervous system, it can lead to more pain. It can lead to anxiety. It can lead to depression, different types of mood disorders, insomnia, trouble sleeping, trouble winding down, muscle cramps, things like that. And so magnesium helps balance that and keeps the calcium balance in the cell optimized, super key for healthy body and healthy function. So we need that. Now zinc, really key for, it turns on and helps with the production of interferon alpha, which is actually a really healthy immune component that stops viral replication. And you know, in that recent pandemic, I think a lot of people heard about zinc because of its ability to stop or slow down and then eventually, you know, if you get enough on board, stop the replication cycle of the virus, which is really key for obviously limiting any sort of viral infection. So zinc, super key that we have that on board. It also helps develop the T and B cells, right? So all of our immune components are benefited and the maturity of those immune components um, is optimized when we have enough zinc on board. Zinc also increases something called superoxide dismutase within the cell, which helps our cell reduce oxidative stress. And really oxidative stress is kind of like an internal rusting, and that is the precursor to chronic inflammation. We have too much oxidative stress, we end up with all these damaged cellular components, which turns on inflammation in our system. So it helps keep oxidative stress and inflammation under control. Zinc, very key to have on board. Also vitamin C. Vitamin C increases the production of interferon beta. So interferon alpha with zinc, interferon beta with vitamin C, really key for that. Also white blood cells, as they are attacking pathogens, they're exposed to excess amounts of oxidative stress. Vitamin C is a really simple antioxidant that they'll use in order to protect themselves so they have a longer lifespan. And the issue here is also that insulin helps get vitamin C as well as glucose into the cell, into the white blood cell. And when we have high insulin, high blood sugar, the sugar and the vitamin C will compete. So high blood sugar actually reduces the amount of vitamin C getting into our cells. So we actually have a, a lower need for vitamin C 
overall, when we keep our immune or when we keep our blood sugar balanced and our immune system healthy. Um, but if we're in a, let's say, uh, you know, an acute viral attack, bacterial attack, getting more vitamin C on board can be extremely helpful. Um, it protects the white blood cells. It also reduces tumor necrosis factor alpha and nuclear factor kappa beta, which are these really powerful inflammatory mediators inside of our system that amplify inflammation throughout our body. And so it helps reduce that. Um, selenium. Selenium is a key trace mineral. It helps, to, it helps with the maturation and the function of the spleen, which is producing immune cells, as well as our lymph nodes, which basically is kind of like an area where a lot of our lymphocytes, right, and our immune cells will aggregate and um, you know, a lot of the immune activity takes place in those lymph nodes. And so it helps with the overall functionality of both of those organ systems. It also helps increase glutathione. These selenoproteins increase glutathione. It's also selenium's been known to help reduce autoimmune activity and antibody formation against self tissue. When we're selenium deficient, we have a higher risk of developing autoimmunity. And in particular, autoimmunity to the thyroid, like Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, where you have autoimmune hyperthyroidism, selenium is one of the most important nutrients there. Now, number eight here is NAC, N acetylcysteine. N acetylcysteine, cysteine is the rate limiting step in the production of glutathione. Glutathione is our body's master antioxidant, and along with vitamin D, is a master immune modulator. Really works with vitamin D to help modulate and balance the immune system. And so we need adequate glutathione production. NAC is the rate limiting step. It increases glutathione production, but NAC also is mucolytic. And what that means is when we develop a lot of like excess kind of mucus building up in our throat and we're trying to cough and get it out, obviously too much mucus production can cause a lot of unwanted health problems, can cause more pneumonia, more bronchitis, um, you know, trouble breathing, a lot of different issues like that. It helps to break down the mucus so we can eliminate it more effectively. And that's really, really key, especially in any sort of respiratory uh, infection that we're dealing with, okay? Quercetin, now this isn't, uh, quercetin is gonna come from plants, right? So quercetin is actually found in the outer skin of things like apples, uh, muscadine grapes, um, cranberries, elderberry is high in quercetin, and it's in the outer layer. Same with resveratrol. Resveratrol is in the outer layer of things like grapes, uh, blueberries, right? So bilberry, which is another, another type of berry. So it's in the outer skin of these things. And being on the outer skin, it has a really key role with protecting those plants from, uh, you know, from different types of pathogens, different types of bacteria and other pests that are trying to eat it. So it really helps with that. Now, quercetin, we know, increases cell autophagy and so does resveratrol. Autophagy is a process where the, the cell will break down older damaged organelles. Like for example, if we have a damaged mitochondria, autophagy is where the cell itself will actually take the mitochondria, break it down because it's not functioning right, and take all the raw materials and produce a newer, healthier, more stress-resilient mitochondria. That's super key, and it's actually the, one of nature's ways of getting rid of uh, viral infected cells. If, a, if we have a viral infected cell, we have really two ways of getting rid of it. One is through autophagy, the other is through what we call cellular apoptosis, where the, it's kind of a programmed cell death process, okay? Um, and so, Autophagy is a cleaner way of doing it, of getting rid of these, and the autophagy process, uh, it, you, it creates less oxidative stress, less inflammation in our system. So that's what we want. Quercetin and resveratrol are two of the most powerful nutrients to increase the autophagy process. Also, quercetin acts as a zinc ionophore, meaning that it helps get zinc into the cell. So we want the zinc on board to stop viral replication, but we need to effectively get it into the cell. Well, in order to do that, you know, zinc is actually typically poorly absorbed by the cell. So if we take a zinc supplement, we absorb it, get it in the blood, we'll get a certain amount of that in the cell. But if we also are taking it with quercetin, we're gonna have a higher absorption rate into the cell where it can stop that viral replication and contribute to all the other great benefits that zinc has, such as vitamin D, 
utilization within the cell, super key. Um, on top of that, it also reduces inflammatory cytokines. So we want things on board that have an overall inflammation damping effect. In order to do that, we have to shut down these inflammatory amplifying agents, the, the inflammasome, uh, which is mediated by tumor necrosis factor alpha and nuclear factor kappa beta. When those are elevated in our blood, they turn on a siren inside of our system that increases overall inflammatory activity. Quercetin and resveratrol both help to dampen that sound, dampen that alarm, turn off the alarm basically if we get enough on board and reduce overall inflammatory activity in our system. On top of that, they're also great for circulation, for skin health, for mitochondrial energy production. So some really, really powerful nutrients that we have there. These are my top 10 immune nutrients right here. Really powerful and actually created a supplement called Immunocharge, which is a 10 in one product. So it has all 10 of these in one product. And basically you get a clinical dose of all 10 of these with just taking four caps a day. I recommend two caps twice a day with meals. You take it with meals because it's got things like zinc, vitamin A, vitamin D that absorb best, selenium as well, that absorb best when you're consuming them with a meal. And that will get you those nutrients in clinical dosages uh, without having to take 10 different supplements, right? So it's really simplified as far as that goes. And it is the best immune support product, immune balancing product that you can find on the market. So if you're looking for better immune support, I would definitely check out Immunocharge or look into finding something that has a wide array of these types of nutrients, supporting these nutrients in your system and doing it properly. Uh, that is gonna set you up for overall success and a healthy, balanced immune response. So hopefully you guys got a lot out of this video. Be sure to share it with anybody that you know and that you care about, and we'll see you guys in a future online training. Be blessed.